lot of content. Uh, I'll try to go through it quickly and to just plant a bunch of ideas on your head. I am happy to expand more about these ideas after in the break. So, enter the interplanetary web. Uh, who has heard about IBFast before? Can I get a quick show of hands? Okay, like 90% of the group. Excellent. Who has heard or feels that they understand what content addressing is? Okay, like 70%, that's perfect. Uh, very knowledgeable crowd. What about process addressing? Does this ring a bell? Okay, 30% crowd. Um, I'm really eyeballing this, by the way. Like, I'm not measuring. What about CRDTs? Oh, well, there's more people about CRDTs than process addressing. That is a surprise. What about DAPs? Okay, okay, a lot of people. What about serverless? Everyone. Okay, let's forget this one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about your opinion, but like definitely like the definition of serverless today is not the one that we think it is. Uh, all right, so the web, this platform that we love, and it's, uh, do you see like the blinking? Yeah. I guess it's the internet uh, sending packets. So the web, the platform uh, that we know, that we love, that we use every day to acquire the knowledge, to communicate with our friends and our loved ones, to run our businesses, it's kind of like very fragile. Uh, might have heard about this before, but like the, the reality is like how many times during the, our day that like we enter a web page and suddenly like we get a 404, or that we go into some location where the connectivity is not that great, and because that um, like we cannot access all of this information that's behind like all of these services. And, and the reason why that happens is because like the way that the internet is set up, and this is like a very simplistic diagram of the internet. Um, there is a couple more boxes. Um, is that we need to like kind of like resolve names to an IP address, and then the IP address is what basically is the door to 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 knock to get access to that service. And so if any path to our that service breaks, now our way to find that service also breaks. But a lot of these services are just like about moving information around. And so when you think about it, like why can I, can't, can't I like get the information from other machines in the network if they have it? Like if I'm moving for a Wikipedia page and if another machine already visited that, that Wikipedia page, why can't I go and I get that page? Or worse, why sometimes like I'm seeing a web page and I go into a plane and then like the, uh, the plane takes off and I refresh the web page and suddenly it just breaks. It just tells me, oh, like, you're not connected anymore. But I was like, I was just like seeing the web page. Why can't I do smarter caching? Like, how can I make sure that like if I have a local copy, I can use it? And so, and the web is also like extremely inefficient. Like, if we are were all to like stream a video to this room right now, we would literally like hammer all of the nodes between us and the server that has the video to download exactly the same bytes. And so. This is just like a few of the issues that the web has today. Uh, and, and like it causes many problems, like in terms of permanence, in terms of control, like it doesn't work for offline and it's connected scenarios that Molly will talk more about. And also the security model is not as robust as we would hope it is. And so IPFS really comes to like solve all of these problems and more. It comes to make the web work offline, distributed, make it smarter, faster, uh, safer, and make links permanent. Make sure that we can always find the data that we are looking for. And it does this by changing one simple design on the whole system, which is instead of like using location addressing, uh, like HTTP uh, relies on, uh, it treats content and tries to find content through its cryptographic primitives, uh, fingerprints. And so uh, instead of me asking for where this content lives, I ask who has this content. And when someone sends me the content, I can check the cryptographic hash, so the fingerprint of the file, and, and see that I received the right thing. And, and in IPFS, like, there's a little bit of smarter things, so it doesn't just grab the file, hashes the file, and I transfer the file. It transforms the file into what we call a DAG, a directed, a cyclic graph, which makes it really convenient when we are sending replicas of the same file, or when we are sending updates of the same data set, where instead of having to send the whole thing over and over and over again, I can just send the nodes that are the updates of that data set. And so yeah, what this means is like you can have a file that is sharded across the entire network, across multiple machines, phones, desktops, laptops, servers, and I can pull the file from everywhere at the same time, getting faster speeds. Uh, there's a lot 
be like below this, like in order to make this work, there's a lot of details that go into the stack. Uh, I won't have the time to go in that, to deep, that deep dive on them today, but there's all of these talks available online. Uh, and again, uh, as I said, I'm super available to like go uh, and, and, and learn on the details of IPFS. <laughs> Cool. So, can you use IPFS today? Yes, you can. Uh, who is a fan of Go? Woo. A bunch of people. Woo. Awesome. So you have the IPFS implementation in Go. It is available. It's fully open source. You can download it. You can install it in your machine. Um, you can use it as a package or as an email. You also have the IPFS implementation in JavaScript. Who is a fan of JavaScript? Oh. Okay, more popular around here. <laughs> awesome. And so uh, the IPFS implementation in JavaScript not only exists in JavaScript, it also does something very special, which is it runs on the browser. So like IPFS is the first protocol that has an implementation that can run internally on the browser. So imagine like you load the script tag and suddenly your browser gets access to this peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, can find files anywhere that where they live on the network. And even more fun, you can even like put it on a service worker so it doesn't distract you from like your regular application, and it just runs in the background, and you can access all the content from the network. But if you are not down to install things, uh, you can also use the IPFS HTTP gateway. So we have gateways available that are on front of the entire network that can fetch the files for you, and you can download the files from the network using regular HTTP. Um, and, and yeah, and you can host your website using this uh, through IPFS. Who is hosting a website on IPFS through HTTP Gateway? All right, like we have like uh, probably like 20% of the people. That's awesome. Uh, there's like this really nice YouTube video that explains you how to do it. Uh, and, and yeah, so there's a bunch of IPFS gateways. <laughs> they still exist. Um, and so yeah, like. Uh, there's this website where you can check like a bunch of IPFS schedules and if they are online or offline. And really happy to be here on this venue well, because Callfair joined the family and they uh, are now one of the IPFS schedules, which is super exciting. <laughs> and not only that, they created like a very good blog post explaining what this means and also instructions how to host your website on IPFS using this gateway and the DNS link trick that you saw in the image before. So yeah, huge props to Copper and thank you for hosting. Um, cool, so what about, okay, I know I can like, access files and download files and trust files. Can I build apps with it? I care about apps. And the answer is yes, and even better, you can build dApps. And dApps are distributed applications. What this means is like, Instead of having an app that like, has some central server where like, everyone has to contact and download things from, you can like, model your app to not require a central point of authority. Like Peers can interact with each other without having a medi mediator in the middle. And, and servers can still exist. There's still a, a role for servers for cloud. Uh, but they, they exist to, pro to augment the quality of a service and not to just provide it. And so the, the application can still work if the server is not there or if the server is not accessible. But like if the, the server is accessible, probably the application, the, the overall experience is going to improve. And so uh, what does a, a DAP look like? You can check this application. Uh, it's online, it's public. The, the source is also uh, public, so you can treat it as a blueprint for your own DAPs. This one is called PeerPad, and it's a peer-to-peer -peer collaborative editing tool powered by IPFS and CRDTs. Uh, it's kind of like a Google Docs without Google. Think like when you are working on a doc, you get that real-time experience. Uh, and like you are basically sending updates to Google and Google is like meshing them together and like distributing them to all the peers. In this case, PeerPad is able to send the updates to all the other peers that are participating on a document and peers can figure uh, the state of the document by themselves. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, you can try it, like it's alpha, so like of course like if you find a bug, please report, uh, create an issue, but, but you can test it today. And, and as I was saying, like the way that this works is there is this thing called CRDT, complete free replicated data type. Um, there's a word missing here. Uh, but like it's just like a clever way, kind of like a contract that describes how you are going to merge the updates. Uh, and so every peer without interacting with each other, uh, as long as they get the updates, they can converge into the same state, which is something really, really powerful. Uh, another thing that PeerProud provides, which is essential for applications, is a way to give uh, permissions, so read, write permissions to uh, this data. And, and it uses a thing called cryptographic ACLs. And in the case of PeerPad, it means like it, it distributes public and private pairs um, through the URL. 
Uh, and, and like what these keys uh, give the users uh, is a way for them to say, hey, I have the symmetric key for this document, so I am allowed to read it. I can decrypt the updates. I can like see what's going on. And if I have the private key, I can uh, sign updates. I can send updates that I sign with this private key, and therefore the other people participating in this document can validate that this document that, that these updates are valid and that they are part of the set of peers that were allowed here. I know I just throw a lot of like props jargon, a lot of ideas with a slide we just text. Uh, again, happy to expand this more during the break. Um, and, and there's like many, like this is just like one of many other applications. There's like from social networks, there are like the distributed version of YouTube or called YouTube. There is like uh, markets, like um, like distributed shops. Uh, there is streaming platforms. There is uh, a gateway to access all the content on the Internet Archive through IPFS. There is mixed reality applications where like content artifacts from archives get loaded into this world uh, in like the, the artifacts because they are so huge in, in size. Uh, it makes more sense to transfer them to IPFS because if you have another device that is close, uh, they, the devices can share the load, can share the, the responsibility to distribute this, um, th these assets. Um, and we have like live here with streaming, we have uh, share like collaborative sharing of files through with strong cryptographic primitives that make sure like your data stays private, stays safe, and you only share it with the people that you want to share. Uh, and we also have like photo sharing apps uh, that enable you to share photos through this peer-to-peer -peer web uh, with your friends. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, we have at least two of the creators here of two of these apps. So if you want to know more about peer girls, you'll see a talk. Yeah. If you want to know more about the mixed real reality one, you can talk with that if he doesn't mind getting <laughs> questions. Um, and so, yeah, and this is just like nine of the many, many like, systems now checking IPFS, trying IPFS, experimenting with IPFS uh, to make the whole web distributed. And so, yeah, IPFS is a very large open source project. Uh, it's completely open source. Uh, you can check all the code, all the discussions, even our calls. Like you can join every week to our calls. We have host them at Mondays at 5 p.m. Um, if you don't have time to go to the call, you can always watch the recording after. And so the, the planning, the execution, the creative thinking, the research, the design, all happens in GitHub, and so everyone is welcome. And yeah, it's a, as I said, like a very large community with over 3,000 contributors and like more than 300 people have come to our repos and like review our code, contribute with code, review the designs of the architecture, participate with more ideas. It, it, it's, it's very active. And so I was not checking the time, but like this is it for me. Uh, happy to answer questions over the break. Thank you so much for your attention.